Hi, welcome to episode 13 of the Gentle Knitter podcast. My name is Nicole and I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Ontario. Today is Sunday, March 4th and it's a very beautiful sunny day. Um, it's actually warming up quite a bit. Yesterday, um, well for the last few days it's been insanely cold um, and it's just been a roller coaster in terms of weather these last several weeks. We've had you know, ranging from, you know, like mid-teens to, you know, minus, almost minus 30 with the wind chill. Um, we've had tons of rain, we've had, we've had lots of snow, we've had freezing rain. Uh, it's just been really quite, quite wild and it's a little difficult to know what to put on in the morning. But luckily as knitters, we know how to layer, so... I've been keeping cozy and uh, trying to keep Marcel cozy. He's very confused because, uh, you know, for four or five days in a row, we won't put his coat on and he's so happy. And then all of a sudden out comes the coat again. And he's like, mm, I don't like this, mama, don't put it on me. <laughs> but uh, he's, he's very, very sweet and gentle. And he lets us put on these ridiculous garbs on him, but um, I, uh, I took a little bit of video of him earlier, so I will uh, maybe insert some of that at the end of the episode after the credits. So stay tuned for a little bit, your, your daily dose of Marcel. Um, it's been several weeks since I've recorded. Last time I talked to you, I was quite sick, and actually I ended up being even sicker after. I spent almost a week uh, at home in bed, well, on the couch mostly, um, and uh, yeah, so not great except that as a knitter, you know, there's always the upside when you're sick, as long as you're you're still able to to have enough wherewithal to knit. I uh, I did a lot of knitting and a lot of um, movie watching, and I actually worked my way through the uh, extended versions of the Lord of the Rings, which is always something I I find very comforting and I love doing, and I probably watch them at least once a year. Um. And I don't know, I'm, I'm just in a Lord of the Rings mood right now because I'm actually also listening to the audiobooks. And I'm about halfway through the Fellowship of the Rings, the first one. And it's a version I, I downloaded on Audible and it's really, it's really great. It's funny because I, when I read the books originally, I was um, probably in my late 20s and um, I, the movies hadn't come out yet. And now I know the movie so much better than the books. And so it's fun to listen, to listen to the books because there's a lot in there that isn't in the movies. And a lot of very charming things, lots of, uh, lots of songs and lots of kind of back stories of, of different, uh, you know, different magical realms and, and people, the history of, of the different um, groups of people, the elves and the, the men and the dwarves and all that. So uh, basically I've just been completely nerding out and, uh, and I like it. <laughs> um, and so I have, I have knit a lot, but I haven't, um, it's mostly sample knitting. So I will have to, um, show you other things. I have a few uh, things that I've been working on, a few knitting things, so I'll show you those. But I actually have quite a bit to show you uh, that is uh, sort of fiber related. Um, a couple of weeks ago it was my birthday. I turned 47 and so I was totally spoiled and I also spoiled myself, so <laughs> the best kind of spoiling, right? Um, so I'm going to show you uh, a couple of things that I got for my birthday. And um, so I, I think we should just jump on in. And um, oh, I also have a few um, really interesting, really fun uh, collaborations and um, kind of um, giveaways and things like that to talk about. So I will, uh, I will talk about those too. All right. Well, first of all, what have I been working on? Apart from samples that I'm... I'm uh, I have just, oh, I'm almost done a big one and I'm about to start another one. So it's gonna, I'm gonna be taken up by sample knitting for a while. But 
Uh, oftentimes, I don't like to um, take the sample knitting with me when I'm, you know, commuting to work or, you know, just kind of going out uh, because I don't want it to get sort of dragged around and put in and out of a bag. Um, I, I try not to, um, you know, try to keep them really nice and, and clean and, and uh, you know, not put the yarn through too much handling. So I always have something that I'm working on for myself. And um, I, uh, I just finished a pair of socks. Uh, sorry, no, I just finished one sock. So I have a hoe. <laughs> And uh, or or I could also call it my work in progress. I don't know if you can see my t-shirt says I am a work in progress, which I absolutely love it. This is one of my uh, self. Uh, <laughs> it's one of my birthday presents that I gave to myself. The t-shirt is from a company called uh, Curious and Co. And um, that company is um, Basically, I think it's Tiff uh, Fussell, oh dear, Dottie Angel, Tiff Fussell, I believe, and her daughter started um, a company and they, they have all kinds of different really neat objects and they have t-shirts, they have one that has a, a, a drawing of their guinea pig, <laughs> it's super cute, I, I was tempted to get that one too, but anyway, I really love this one because it's sort of, um, it looks like a sacred heart and then I, I love the message, you know, I am a work in progress and it, you know, kind of ties back to the knitting, so um, anyway, so I do have a work in progress. So my work in progress, or one of them, is um, is a sock. Um, I hesitate showing it to you honestly because it is very dark, uh, a very dark sock yarn, and you're probably not going to see anything. But uh, I can at least talk about this super cute project bag that I'm keeping it in. Uh, this bag was made by uh, Melissa from Tiny Happy. Uh, it's got these adorable little embroidered chamomile flowers. I bought this years and years ago, um, closer to when she, she actually opened her shop. And uh, it's one of my favorites. It's a, a nice drawstring bag and uh, the inside is lined with a really cute little uh, dotted fabric. And uh, so the sock is a, a very dark navy vanilla sock. So really not not a lot for you to see. Maybe I can show you. Oh, well, that's coming up pretty good. So it is a dark blue and black and a bit of brown uh, sock yarn. It's from Into the World. I will put the colorway down here. I don't have it here with me. But anyway, I've got half of a sock done. I just started the second one. And um, so that's one thing that I'm kind of carrying around with me when I don't want to, um, when, I, when I'm when i out. The other thing I'm working on is a shawl. I always like to have a pair of socks and a shawl on the needles. Um, I think, I don't know why, they're just things that I find uh, quite portable and uh, fun to work on uh, sort of when I'm just um, grabbing uh, my things uh, to go out. Um, this shawl is very simple. It's called Grateful Moments and it's by Sylvia McFadden. I'll put up a picture of what it looks like because there's not much to see here. But basically it's a triangular shawl that is got alternates uh, stocking at with garter um, rows and um, there's increases and decreases to create that kind of ribbed, um, the ribbed uh, or the sort of wavy lines. The yarn I'm using is Effect Garn, the uh, yarn that changes um, color um, very gradually in very long repeats. This one is all gray big surprise here. It's all pale gray, which I really like. It's it's very, very subtle. You probably can't even really see. Um, it started with kind of like the palest color, and then this is probably like the darkest section. So it'll go in and out of that, and uh, just it'll just be a nice, really rustic, um, simple shawl 
the way I like them and uh, one that will uh, will be quite durable and easy easy to wear so um, I'm knitting that on actually on these these are very old needles uh, they are lantern moon uh, ebony needles so they're they're wood um, I love the feel of the needle itself it's very smooth and warm I love the the, the feel of wood the join is not great uh, it really catches on certain projects. This one is fine. I think the yarn is sort of, it's not that fine, so it seems to slide around the uh, the needle okay. And also the cables, I don't know what the Lantern Moon needles are like now. They might be uh, a lot better, but this is the only Lantern Moon uh, circular needle that I bought because I wasn't really all that thrilled with with um, with it as a circular needle, but I, I do love the, the tips and I find ebony is such a beautiful wood that um, for certain projects I, I do like to grab these and also they are, I believe they're my only 3.75 needle and um, yeah, this I think the pattern called for three and a half, but uh, my yarn is a little bit thicker than what the pattern calls for, so hence the 375 millimeter needles. So those are really the only two uh, knitting projects I can show you. Um, I did do, oh actually no, I have one more, although it's super boring. <laughs> You're gonna be like, Nicole, how many gray garter projects can you show us? Well, turns out quite a few. This is, I'm almost done, the center square for my quill. Um, which is going to be really big. Um, I don't know if you remember, I talked about knitting this um, after I had, um, I had talked to you about a quill that I knit previously in uh, different kind of sandy beachy colors and it ended up being a bit too small. I wasn't happy with the size of it so now I use it as a uh, as a throw on the, on the couch which I really like so I'm glad that I'm I, find, I figured out a good use for for that one but I wanted another one and I think you know a gray uh, a beautiful heathered gray quill, which is a traditional, well, it, it's it's based on traditional hap construction. It's a pattern by Jared Flood, uh, and it's a Brooklyn Tweed pattern. I think it was written originally for Loft. Um, I just thought that I, a gray one would be really beautiful. And I'm using um, this crazy cone of yarn which I've also talked about. It's Briggs and Little, and it is uh, it's the it's the wool that they uh, it's typical Briggs and Little wool. Although this cone was uh, not, I'm told, not commercially available to knitters. Um, it was produced for uh, a carpet company, but like I said, it's not super rough like carpet wool can be. It's it's not super soft, it's general, you know, Briggs and Little wool. Uh, so it's it's definitely not super soft, although once you wash it and all that, it gets, it gets nicer. But I paid like $15 for this huge entire cone. And I've, you know, knit this huge garter square and I barely made a dent in the cone. So <laughs> I'm pretty excited about that. I actually have couple more of these. I have three more cones. Uh, not in gray. I've got one more gray and then I have two um, kind of a, a really pretty kind of fawn color and uh, I probably will make uh, a nice long cardigan with with the other uh, three cones. But anyway, so I've got that on the needles. It's funny because this thing uh, I've I kind of put a row on it here and there and uh, a, a week ago I counted how many rows I had and basically the way that it works is that you are knitting, you have to knit 
uh, the same amount of garter ridges as you have stitches. So uh, this one, I believe I have 135 stitches. So I have to knit 135 of these garter ridges, which ends up being two rows, because eventually what I'll do is I will be picking up each uh, garter ridge and then um, taking off this provisional cast on I'm picking up those stitches and then again picking up the garter ridges and then so my entire square will be on my circular, ne circular needle and then I'll be knitting the border in the round. Um, so I counted my ridges about a week ago and I think I had a hundred and I had like in the low hundreds, like 103 or, and so I'm like, okay, I still need to go, you know, I have to get to 135. So I decided that, you know, whenever I wasn't working on the sample, I would knit exclusively on this to get the square done so I could show you the finished square uh, when I recorded today. Well, I was in a knitting black hole. I was knitting and knitting and knitting on it like every spare moment I had and I'm still not I still have about 10 more garter ridges to knit so I don't know why it's taking me so long but anyway it's um, I don't mind I love garter and I love gray yarn as you know so uh, it's totally mindless and very comforting and I'll sh actually really nice uh, to have on my lap as I'm working. It's a nice cozy little thing to have, but it this is not anywhere near <laughs> being done. It's you're probably gonna see that thing for uh, another several months and uh, probably will stop talking about it until I have something more exciting than just a square of garter to show you. Okay, so uh, that's it. That is it for knitting. I have done a bit of spinning and I've also been playing with spinning fiber in general because one of the things that I got for my birthday was something called a blending board. And so for those of you, oh, I'm sorry, my husband is uh, gesturing to me. Uh, the phone just rang. I will be right back. <laughs> All right, sorry about that. Uh, it was my parents calling long distance and I hadn't talked to them in a little while. So um, I caught, uh, got all caught up with them, uh, but now the light, as you can see, has changed a little bit. So uh, hopefully it won't disrupt um, the, the podcast. Uh, I'm just going to keep going. So I was talking about uh, something I got for my birthday, which is a blending board. And for those of you who have who don't know what that is, it is basically a uh, wooden board that ha is covered with a, um, a rubber mat that is covered in little spikes. And you also get a brush that is also covered with the same type of little spikes and two dowels and you might be wondering what the heck do you do with this so basically it's used to create um, blended uh, fiber so you can take uh, any type of, uh, of spinning fiber and apply it to the board and then uh, you can do all kinds of different color mixes. You can uh, you can do stripes. Uh, you can do uh, you can put in um, like different colored thread, like sari silk or um, different locks. And basically, uh, you apply it to the board, and then you um, you use the brush to kind of uh, tamp down the fibers, and then you use the dowels to pull up the fiber. So you basically have, a, I mean, I'm not gonna do a tutorial. If you're interested in seeing how it actually works with the fiber, there's tons of really great videos on YouTube and uh, I'll, I'll link to a couple of those. But basically once you've applied uh, a good amount of fiber, you end up with kind of a little skirt of fiber at the end and you take the dowels and you pinch the fiber and you draft it and roll it and basically you can either create um, you could create sort of like a bat um, so you could lift off the whole piece of fiber that is on the blending board 
Or um, what I have been doing, and the reason why I bought the blending board, or why I um, I bought it but with uh, birthday money, is um, to create something called Rolex. And Rolex are a type of fiber preparation uh, that end up looking like almost like little little worms, little fiber worms, or um, they kind of look maybe a little bit like dreads. Um, and basically, you can create these um, these tubes of fiber. I'm just gonna try and pull one out. Um, that. Uh, basically like this is it's been stretched out a bit but this is kind of was one section of my blending board that got the fiber got pulled off and rolled around the dowel and then uh, then you end up with this thing which you can use to spin and basically uh, you can you can basically just spin from the tube and it's a really easy way to spin and it, it ends up being um, more or less a woolen prep because the fibers are they are combed but they they're sort of not uh, not super uniform so it, it ends up being uh, if you want to spin woolen from uh, on a wheel it's really easy to just kind of pull back and, and get the wheel to take up the fiber. Um, it, you can also spin uh, this fiber on a drop spindle and it's also quite easy because when you're working with your drop spindle your fiber is kind of managed. Uh, you can just kind of drape drape it over your arm and just spin from from the um, from the Rolag. I actually um, brought my spindle. I spun some of this. Uh, basically what I took was I had some um, some natural colored merino and I also had some uh, merino that was dyed kind of a bright um, kind of teal blue and I created a mix to um, you're gonna it's harder to see but there's like bits that are more white and then bits that are more blue and as you spin it you end up with um, yarn that is very gently variegated or not variegated but tonal I guess and um, yeah, Rolex are just really fun. They're a really fun way to uh, to prepare and spin yarn. Um, so yeah, I've been having a lot of fun. I created um, some of them were more like just pale, uh, neutrally type of blends like this. But you can definitely use a blending board to create um, like a rainbow. Um, rainbow blend, uh, striped, you could do very defined stripes and then spin a striped yarn. Um, I did one that is kind of a, an ombre effect, so I had a, a braid that had dark browns and then uh, very rich teals and sort of a, a brownish um, beige in between. So I basically broke up my braid into the, I, I separated out the different colors into piles. And then when I uh, applied the fiber to my blending board, I applied it, you know, I would apply, let's say, like the dark brown here and the, the lighter brown and the beige and then the lighter teal and then the dark teal. And so I would always create um, my board that way and pull out my roll eggs. And so my roll eggs end up being ombre. And when I spin it, I could, there's several things I could do. I could decide to spin... Um, you know, start at the brown end and finish the rolag at the teal and then the next rolag I could spin from the teal and then the brown and then so you would get these long transitions or I could do it the other way around and then depending on how I ply my yarn I could end up with continuous color or a marled effect. Um, basically there's so many fun opportunities to play and uh, as I've mentioned before for me spinning is all about playing. I am not, um, I mean, I do try and produce yarn that I like and that is something I want to knit with, 
but I don't stress out too much about it because I don't really have the skill yet to um, be uh, very definite in, in my spinning goals. And uh, because I spend a lot of my knitting time being very accurate and very, very particular and picky, it's kind of fun to have another craft where I'm just a little more uh, free to experiment and have fun. And you know, if I end up with yarn that I don't like or that is not my color, that's fine. I just, I give it away or, um, you know, I donate it to uh, Goodwill, that kind of thing. I have, a, a, one of the things that I was excited about um, with the blending board is that I would be able to blend um, fiber that maybe I was no longer that interested in spinning with uh, more neutral fiber. So for instance, I could blend a very dark brown uh, bat or you know a big bump of fiber. I could blend that with some really bright um, purple or um, you know some electric blue, but just put the tiniest amount of the very bright color blended in with the the neutral color. And when you spin it up, it would end up probably being more of a like a tweedy effect um, that would resemble. A lot of the um, a lot of the yarns that I really love from Shetland or even Brooklyn Tweed. When you look at them up close, you see that there's a ton of different colors in there. But the overall effect is uh, you read it from afar as one color, but inside there's there are other colors in there, giving it a lot of depth and richness. So my intention was to perhaps play around with the blending board and see if I couldn't recreate uh, a little bit, some, some of that by, um, by using mostly neutral yarns like gray or cream or brown, but then inserting and layering, very, very finely layering some brighter shots and, um, and seeing what I end up with. So, um, so I really look forward to exploring more of that. I've been watching a lot of online tutorials on how to do that and how to spin from them. And uh, now I really, really want to get a new wheel. Um, I did a bit of a yarn or a wheel tasting at one of my local yarn stores called Wabi Sabi. It's a great store. Um, it's right in my neighborhood. They have um, knitting supplies and spinning and weaving, and they do a lot of classes and they are incredibly helpful. They have beautiful things, beautiful tools. And uh, I tried several of their wheels because my wheel, uh, it's an, Ashtr an Ashford traditional. And I've spoken about it before. It's, uh, it works really well, but it is really starting to get quite wobbly. All the different parts um, of the, like the, the part that holds the bobbin in place, it, those, um, I don't, there are technical terms for for these parts and I don't remember what they are, but the the, the two um, posts, I guess, that hold that the, um, the, the flyer are wobbly. So as I spin, um, that kind of uh, vibrates and then it opens up the, the, the things that hold the, the flyer in place. And then all of a sudden like pop my my <laughs> my spindle or my bobbin falls off and little things like that I probably um, maybe if I um, had brought my wheel to somebody who does woodwork maybe they could either glue it back or or do something to kind of um, to sort of make it more stable but anyway just all that to say that my wheel is is quite old and it works fine but now that I'm more and more interested in spinning I um, I thought oh it'd be fun to try different wheels and there was one in particular that I really fell in love with it's a Louette I believe it's the S10 and it's a double treaded wheel. So uh, for those of you who don't know wheels, there are different um, pedaling mechanisms and there are different ways that the uh, wheel is 
tensioned and uh, so this wheel has two treadles so you're using both feet to move the wheel whereas my Ashford traditional there's only one pedal so you're using obviously one foot to to treadle um, and uh, yeah and it looks very different it's got a more it's a much more compact and um, got a slightly a, a very clean and almost modern look but um, like modern in a kind of a Scandinavian sense it, it's a blonde wood and anyway it's a very pretty wheel and um, it works amazing I really enjoyed spinning on it in particular because I found it quite easy to make thicker yarns on that wheel whereas my Ashford I don't know why but I seem to only be able to produce very fine yarn <laughs> and uh, so uh, so yeah it'd be fun to have another wheel and be able to do that but um, I don't have the funds for that right now so I'm gonna save my pennies and maybe uh, sometime in the next year or so um, maybe I'll have enough to buy myself a new wheel but anyway I'm, I'm, I'm really getting quite into spinning I get a lot of questions or not a lot but I, I have gotten questions in my uh, questions thread about spinning about specific techniques and I am really hesitant to answer those because I I just really don't know a lot and um, I don't feel like I am uh, an expert or not even an intermediate spinner so I'm always a little bit hesitant uh, feel free to ask the questions but I I'm not sure I am the best person to answer and maybe I can just point you in the right direction but I did uh, get one other spinning related gift and that is a book um, called yarn texture and um, when I was talking earlier about not really having the skill to produce a specific yarn or having a, a specific yarn goal and then uh, knowing the techniques to to get that product that I want this book it basically addresses that so the title of the book is a knitter's guide to spinning building exactly the yarn you want and um, it's a really beautiful book it's very uh, very colorful it's not necessarily um, always my you know uh, the thing that I'm drawn to aesthetically but technically this book is very strong and um, just has a lot it addresses a lot of the different ways that um, like how you the different techniques and how they affect or how they um, you know how they result in a specific uh, product and um, so yeah, I and it also talks about, I was talking earlier about bats, it talks about working with bats, working with the different preparations. There's um, there's a section on, on roll eggs and, and poonies, which are kind of a smaller version of roll eggs. Um, it talks to you about how to um, how to break up your fiber if you've got a multicolored braid let's say uh, the different ways you can uh, split that braid up to have different effects um, yeah it just it, it's a really beautiful book and it also has some really lovely patterns um, that are sort of um, meant to you know be great patterns for a hand spun yarn there's um, these very pretty color work mittens um, there are yeah there's a couple of sweater patterns um, there's a really pretty shawl let me try and find it yeah, this the shawl here um, it's kind of just a, a very simple um, garter stitch shawl with a lace edging um, oh this is a very pretty sweater um, it's by Kristen Kapoor um, here is the like kind of detail shot but it's um, sort of a kind of an open front cardigan with a lace panel Anyway, um, I won't show you too much of it because with the lighting in here, it is a little bit difficult to see 
uh, photos in in nice uh, in nice detail but uh, for if you are like me you're hoping to sort of explore how to develop um, techniques that will get you a specific type of yarn I really recommend this book I just got it so I haven't really put into practice any of the uh, any of the techniques that it discusses but I, I do feel having looked it over that it really is a great overview of you know all the different um, things you can do to to get the yarn you want so that is uh, one of the books I, I have several books and magazines that I wanted to talk about today so I will mention very quickly this magazine called boat and I saw this on um, Lori uh, Lori times five Lori Graham's Instagram feed and she is the ultimate enabler and this book uh, it, uh, magazine is a travel magazine that I wasn't familiar with but it um, it basically I think it every issue kind of fo focuses on one particular region and this one is set is uh, features the Faroe Islands and I Faroe Islands are um, a place that I am absolutely dying to go to. Um, it's a, uh, a, a set of islands that it says here, a cluster of 18 small islands in the North Atlantic Ocean, sitting about halfway between Iceland and Norway and 200 miles north of the top of Scotland. So it is a very remote and very um, um, wild place and they have a very strong knitting tradition. I'm going to try and find photo. There's all the different articles. There's, you know, some about, you know, food that you can eat there, some about the the sort of outdoor wildlife stuff to do. There's um there's uh all kinds of articles, but even even like articles about uh society but there's also, of course, um, knitwear featured, um, like this beautiful sweater. It doesn't it doesn't have patterns, but it just uh, it's articles about um, this one is uh, about the fleece industry in uh, in Faroe Islands, the Faroese wool industry. And of course, there's got to be cute uh, photos of sheep. Anyway, it's a very lovely um, magazine, and it just makes me want to go to the Faroe Islands even more. So, boat magazine, very, very nice. I ordered it, I believe, from their website, because it's not a magazine that's available to me here locally. I also got another magazine called Len, and this one I might have seen also on Lori's Instagram. Um, it is a beautiful knitting magazine, Scandinavian magazine, even though the name is French. It is, Len means wool in uh, French. The magazine is from Sweden, Norway, uh, <laughs> sorry. From, I can't find the information. It is a Scandinavian publication. Let's just put it that way. But it features uh, patterns by Hoki Locatelli, um, Stephen West. Um, there's this insane, beautiful knit cable dress um, that, like, oh, just that picture is so, so beautiful. And it's it's a dress. I don't think I could ever pull this off, but um, look at how beautiful that is. You can actually knit it as a pullover, which is probably what I would do. Um, there's articles, um, all kinds of articles. This one about a farm, a yarn farm in uh, Finland with beautiful photos of sheeps, sheepies, 
who doesn't love them. And the photography in this magazine is amazing. There's an article about Elsa Hisiger and a very pretty hat pattern of hers. Basically, this thing is right up my alley. This really sweet little pullover. The pattern is by Jonna Hitala and it's called Nuke. Just a really simple little knit tee, which I find really, really sweet. Anyway, it's beautiful. I really love this magazine. There's also other crafts. This is um, like a little cross stitch bracelet you can you can make that's very pretty. Anyway, highly recommend this. I really love this issue. I ordered it from um, from a store in Montreal. I ordered it online. The store is called. Oh my goodness. I will put it up here. Why can't I remember? It's a beautiful yarn store in, in Montreal. Anyway, Len Magazine, gorgeous. Um, and then this book is absolutely magical. I've, uh, I love this book so much. I've only read about maybe a quarter of it, but I'm completely enamored and I can't wait to um, to finish well actually I can wait I'm I'm trying to read through it slowly to savor it it is called in the footsteps of sheep it's by Deborah Debbie Zawinski and Debbie is a woman who she lives in Wales but she goes on a trip a walking and camping trip across Scotland and along her travels she's basically walking through uh, different um, rural areas where there are sheep and she's picking up the fleece that gets um, discarded in the in the fields and spins the fleece that she finds into wool that she, into yarn that she then um, knits. She knit a pair of socks that basically represented her journey. And uh, so all of the sheep that she is um, using, or the sheep that she's looking for, they are all um, old breeds of sheep that are. Um, that are basically not imported sheep or not, I mean, I guess pretty much all sheep are come from somewhere, but they, they're ancient breeds. And uh, so they, um, they, they lose their, their fleece naturally. Um, I mean, they do get sheared, but um, they, they do release some of that and it ends up either uh, along like fences or just on the ground. There's actually a photo here, I believe, of her husband picking up. You can see there's like fleece is dotting the, uh, the landscape there. In, uh, in Shetland, they call those bits of uh, fleece henty locks. And the book actually starts, uh, she starts her trip in Shetland. And oh my goodness, it, it's wonderful to read through it because she goes to uh, all these different places that I had the uh, great opportunity of visiting when I was in Shetland. And uh, so it's bringing back a lot of really wonderful memories. And the writing style is incredible. I love the way this woman writes. It's a very, uh, very descriptive, uh, really... Uh, a very fun and engaging um, tone. I, I really, I love her voice. I love uh, what she did. I love the idea of this trip. I would love to do a trip like this. And it really is just wonderful. There's, it's full of photos. So basically it has, um, you know, photos of her, of her travels, the landscapes that she walks through. And the different adventures because she is camping so you can see here she set up her camp uh, on the shore of some maybe a lock 
and uh, it's really spectacular. The photos are really beautiful. And the other wonderful thing is it's full of sock patterns and that are uh, basically inspired by the, uh, the landscape, the sheep, also the people that she met, and, uh, and you can see some of that. Um, I, I can't uh, recommend this highly enough. It's, it's an absolute delight, and I'm so glad I got this. I ordered it from uh, Claire from the Woolly Thistle, who I talked about last time. She was the one who donated some beautiful Haya Haya needles for my last giveaway. And so um, I had been checking her shop because she had been sold out of this for quite a while. And then finally uh, she, got, uh, she got it back in again and I ordered it immediately. And of course, you know, when you order something, especially in Canada, when you order something from the States, you're going to be paying shipping anyways. You might as well throw in a couple of skeins of yarn. And it just so happens that she had gotten a very special order in of yarn. Um, the yarn is uh, is called, uh, it's wool from the Isle of Purbeck. Purbeck? I'm not sure how to say that. Um, the colors are probably not going to show up true here. Uh, gray. <laughs> and a beigey pink. And this one is really not not showing up very well. Um, I don't know if I can... No, that's not going to work at all. It's, it's a color that's extremely difficult to even... It, it's hard to capture and in fact the photo on the website I thought that this yarn was more of a warm brown and uh, so I got it. It was a bit of a surprise that it was more of a it's, it's really a grayish, brownish pink, and it's beautiful. Uh, this yarn is absolutely stunning. So one of the colors, the gray is called Shell Track, and the uh, pinky brown is Withy Bed. And the, this one is 100% Pole Dorset, and then this one is a blend. It says 100% pure wool. But it is a blend. Uh, the website does list what the yarns are. I don't. I don't remember. It's quite soft, and it's it's very uh, very toothy and very um, squishy and uh, rustic and everything that I love. It's what um, it's what Sarah from the Fiber Trek would call soulful stash. It's got a lovely story behind it and. Um, it's really, you can really feel the, the sheep that's kind of behind this product. Um, it's not overly processed and as you know, that is what I love. So anyway, I'm very, very excited to make something with this. I'm not sure what. Probably a large two color shawl. I've got um, 350 meters in each skein, so that will make something very beautiful at some point. So uh, the next thing I want to tell you about is a new giveaway. Um, a couple of weeks ago I was contacted by Joyce on uh, by PM on Ravelry and she has a, uh, a yarn shop called Free Fibers. Uh, I will put the link to her shop below. Uh, and she basically um, asked me if I would be interested in receiving some yarn to give away on the podcast. Of course, uh, that was um, a lovely offer, and so I said yes. I went to look at her shop, and she has really stunning yarn. She uh, she has uh, all of her yarn is um, natural, sort of unprocessed uh, or not heavily processed yarns. She's got Icelandic wool and uh, different uh, sort of older breeds, and it's all uh, dyed with natural dyes. And uh, I, as you know, I love rustic yarns and I love natural dyeing, so I was very excited to uh, to select something for you guys for the for a giveaway. 
And so I received this amazing package and not only did I receive some beautiful things for you, but Joyce also very kindly um, sent me a few goodies and I am absolutely thrilled with what I received. So um, first of all, I'm going to show you uh, the yarn that she sent me and um, it is a skein of Icelandic. It's a sim single ply kind of fingering weight yarn. Um, so here, here is a really beautiful label. I love that. I think it's so cute. Freehand yarns. Um, it's 480 yards of naturally dyed uh, Icelandic wool. And it says it is naturally dyed with woad seeds, which is so cool because I don't know if you can see here. Oh, that's pretty good. Um, it is a very beautiful pale green color. And woad is actually a dye that is usually or traditionally used to produce blue. It was actually the main source of uh, blue dye for, uh, for a very long time until indigo be uh, started getting imported uh, in the West uh, from, I believe, from India or China. I, I'm sorry, I don't have the exact details, but I know that woad was sort of the main blue that uh, that was available or commercially available in uh, in Western Europe, uh, sort of in medieval times, that kind of thing. And then uh, people switched over to indigo because indigo is a much brighter blue. Uh, woad is generally paler and in France it was one of the main crops for a long time. It was actually, uh, I think it's called uh, pastel is the name of the plant in in French and, um, and pastel means like a pale color so um, so anyway, it was a really pretty but more pale blue. This is dyed with woad seeds and it is a very pale and pretty green. So I absolutely love this yarn. I think it's so beautiful and I love Icelandic. So I'm really thrilled with that and I know it'll make a beautiful shawl or I, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to make with it, but I'm really looking forward to working with this. So thank you so much, Joyce. And then she sent me this stunning, uh, this stunning eco printed uh, pouch. Um, basically, I would use it as a notions pouch or uh, maybe like a travel pouch, but it is really beautiful. I'm sorry, you're not getting a very good view of it there. That's pretty good. And she's also done some hand stitching to uh, bring out some of the, uh, the spines of the leaves, which is really, really beautiful. I really love this. It's so beautifully made. And the fabric is a beautiful, kind of rustic, sort of a linen-y, or no, it says cotton, but it, it, it's um, got a really kind of a thick weave to it. it it's, it's so gorgeous. I really love this pouch and um, it, it's really very, very much the, the type of thing I love. So, so thank you Joyce for that. And then for the giveaway, she sent uh, another yarn that is naturally dyed and it is also very stunning. It was hard not to uh, keep it for myself. It is this absolutely gorgeous, vibrant, um, beautiful pink yarn. It is uh, 436 yards and it's naturally dyed with Punctelia rudecta lichen. So this yarn is, is dyed with lichen and this yarn is so soft. This is, the, the Icelandic is not that soft and that is you know, normal for, for Icelandic yarn, but this is not Icelandic. It just says wool. I'm not quite sure what type of wool this is, but it is so soft and squishy and beautiful. Um, it's really gorgeous. Uh, I'm not usually a pink person, but this color, it's getting blown out. Um, it, it, 
and there it's showing up a bit too maybe too hot it, it's it's very soft and a beautiful beautiful color so this is going to go to somebody I'm gonna do a giveaway with this yarn and um, I haven't figured out yet what the prompts gonna be I'll I'll create a thread in Ravelry and I will ask you a question uh, to me this is very springy so maybe I'll ask you a spring related question but so you'll get this beautiful yarn but that's not all she also sent another beautiful uh, project bag this one has a, a stunning um, kind of uh, floral illustration on it I'm not sure if uh, if Joyce made this illustration uh, but it it's, uh, looks like it's silk screened on and it's a really lovely very uh, very large pouch that will hold not only the yarn but also holds this very beautiful uh, notebook that she made and it is handmade with uh, beautiful paper and uh, the 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 cover paper here looks like it was hand printed um, it's really really lovely and her business card is here again a really lovely design I love that so much so Joyce Tromba freehand fiber and book arts and she's on Facebook Instagram and Etsy so thank you so much Joyce for this incredibly generous uh, giveaway um, I will be like I said putting up a post in my thread in my uh, Ravelry group with a question and uh, then let's see I will draw because this is so springy I think I will draw it on the first day of spring which is is it is that March 21st maybe that's too soon why don't we say April 1st so I will draw the winner for this giveaway April 1st um, I also have received another uh, package of yarn for a giveaway. I'm not going to uh, talk about it right now only because I um, will we'll, we'll do this beautiful giveaway first. But I will tell you that it is uh, from the Fiber Company, which is a, a yarn company that I adore. And they sent me some yarn to try out and they sent a skein for you too. So I will be talking about that in my next episode. But I do want to let you know that they also very generously sent a coupon code for um, so that you can uh, you get a discount um, if you are interested in buying one of their patterns. So I will put the discount code here. It's good until the end of March, so that's why I wanted to tell you about it right now. But um, basically, uh, I highly encourage you to go check out their patterns. They have some beautiful patterns, and their yarn is one that I've loved for a long time. They do really interesting blends of all different types of uh, fiber not just sheep but uh, they they blend in a lot of different exotic things like yak and camel um, silks different types of silks um, hemp linen um, they do beautiful beautiful blends and their colors are always stunning they're a company that I wish uh, I wish there was a local um, I wish I could buy that yarn locally, but probably a good thing that I can't. Um, I do have some of their yarn in my stash, and I've knit a few garments with their yarn and really impressed with the quality. So I'm excited to tell you more about that next time. All right, well, I'm going to try and wrap up. I'm starting to get sunlight right in my face, but there is one last thing that I wanted to tell you about. I, um, it's a very special book project that is being crowdfunded and you might have heard about it. It's called Woods Making Stories. It's a project um, that was um, put together by two very incredibly talented uh, fiber 
uh, fiber people, uh, Hannah Lisa and Verena, and they got in touch with me asking me if I was interested in collaborating with them to promote uh, their book. And um, I had already been very interested in this product and uh, really look forward to it coming out. So, of course, I was happy to, to tell you about it. The book features 11 patterns that feature uh, local yarns from Europe. So small production yarns uh, with, um, with uh, native uh, breeds and a very beautiful kind of minimalist natural uh, look or aesthetic. Uh, something that definitely speaks to me and um, I thought maybe if, uh, if you enjoy the types of things that I talk about in this podcast then you might be also interested in this book. They sent me a pattern, uh, one of the patterns from the book to knit and uh, it is a gorgeous uh, hat pattern and the name of the pattern is called the Picos de Europa hat. I will insert a photo right here. And I thought it would be really fun to do a knit along of that pat pattern. And the way you can get your hands on that pattern is by donating to their funding, uh, to their, uh, their funding uh, page. So if you go to Indiegogo, I've got the link down here, and they have different levels of uh, donations. So uh, the lowest level, you get the free pattern. Uh, if you pay higher level, then uh, you get the free book, you get the book with the pattern. Uh, there are all different types of uh, donation schemes, if you will, and uh, there's even, there are workshops and one-on-one uh, -on -one tutorials and all kinds of really cool, uh, cool things that, uh, that they are offering as part of their, their project. So I'm thinking if anybody else is interested in knitting that hat, then please head on over to the, uh, to their page and um, next time. I, I will create a thread in uh, Ravelry so you can let me know if you're interested in joining the knit along for the hat then we will uh, we will go ahead and do that. In any case I'm knitting the hat no matter what so I will knit it and talk about it on the uh, on the podcast. But they uh, I believe that they're they're very close to their goal their fundraising goal. Uh, they have about another two weeks before that wraps up and I'm sure they would really appreciate uh, getting to that uh, that 100% funding uh, funding uh, level. So if you're interested in knitting the hat, if you're interested in the book, I encourage you to go and, uh, and donate and then maybe join the Cal with me. All right, well, that is it for today. I feel like I've talked quite a lot. I was a little discombobulated, um, but hopefully it was not too, not too uh, scattered. Uh, I always enjoy talking to you. Uh, a couple of things before I leave you. I, I keep saying that, a couple more things, but really this is something I meant to say and I don't want to forget. I... I'm terrible at putting up show notes. I still haven't put up the show notes for the last episode and I'm really sorry. I will really try and make an effort to do that as I'm editing because, um, you know, as I edit the show, I have to basically watch it and go through the whole thing. And I think for me, what I need to do is just take the notes down as I'm watching it because the problem is that if I don't do that, then I have to watch the whole episode again to have uh, the timestamps and to be able to tell you, you know, when I've talked about certain things. And frankly, once I'm done editing the episode, I don't really want to watch it again. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, this is just an apology that I'm terrible at show notes. I'm going to try and be better. And also, I am planning on recording an episode very soon that will be all questions. 
because that's the other thing I'm not very good at is answering questions in the Ask Me Anything thread, but I do love getting those questions. So um, maybe next weekend I will do an episode that is entirely questions and I will try, try and work my way through those so that uh, you're not languishing waiting for an answer. And uh, I appreciate your patience. I really do love doing this podcast. I am finding it a bit challenging keeping up with comments, comments on Instagram, on Ravelry. I don't want anybody to feel like their comment is not important to me. I see all of the comments, I read them, and I really appreciate them. And I do try and answer them also, but sometimes it takes me a little while. So hopefully you'll forgive me that um, it's just hard to keep track of all of it, but I um, I really cherish that, com um, that communication and that connection with you. So please keep them coming, keep your comments and questions coming, and I will get back to them uh, as soon as I can. Anyway, that's it for today. It really is it now. I will leave you and I look forward to talking to you again. I hope you have a wonderful week and um, full of lovely, lovely knitting and time with the ones you love. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Marcel, hello. Hi, are you excited? Are you excited? Do you want to say hello? Yeah, say hello. 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 Hello, Marcel. <laughs> Those ears are hilarious. I know. Oh, bless you. Oh, yes. Hello. Hello. Hello.